But I'm writing like the last scene of the book. He woke up at 5.30. This is for you, Kurt. Cheers. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be trying to write like Kurt Vonnegut, author of one of my dad's favorite books ever, Cat's Cradle. Also the author of like Slaughterhouse Five and Breakfast of Champions and other books that have been on my TBR for way too long. Way too long. The fun thing about Kurt is that he actually has a pretty set routine, something that hasn't happened for a while in this series for me, so I'm really excited to see if I can uh, mimic it. To be fair, this routine is actually just one snapshot of his life. He was already writing books by then. He was actually teaching a writing course, and this was all kind of pulled from a letter that he wrote to his wife at the time detailing his daily routine. So let's delve more into it, shall we? So from this article in The Atlantic, they have a copy of his letter beginning, Dear Jane, where basically he woke up at 5.30. And let me tell you, as someone who already wakes up early, that's the part I'm probably least excited for. In fact, should I set my alarm now? I feel like I should set my alarm now. I'm not gonna remember. Ew. Now. Safe. A whole 15 hours and 34 minutes from now, yay. He gets up at 5.30, works until 8, eats breakfast at home, and then works until 10. I'm guessing from this he kind of like eats at his desk, basically. Then he walks a few blocks into town, does some errands, and swims for a half hour before returning home at 11.45. Now, I do have a few errands to run, but we might intermix that with just kind of generally walking around the apartment complex before I pool. After he gets home at 11.45, he reads the mail, which I'm going to try not to check my email until that time. We're gonna see how that goes. He eats lunch at noon and then his afternoon is really interesting because basically his work day is split between like writing work in the morning and then like a different kind of work in the afternoon. Mostly at that time, schoolwork, whether he was teaching or preparing lectures, chatting with students, whatever. Then he got home at 5.30 and numbed his twanging intellect with several belts of scotch. And he cooked supper, read, listened to jazz, slipped off to sleep at 10. My small change to his routine, and actually not even a change because I think his routine is pretty clearly flexible, is that I have a Patreon live stream at two. And so I'm thinking that could be like a good mix of like, it's not teaching, but like a performance in front of people. Just work with me here. <laughs> and during that live and the rest of the afternoon, I will work on freelance specific stuff. So no novels, maybe even a couple of upcoming partnerships and editing this video potentially. I am also admittedly a little nervous about the scotch as I don't think I've ever had scotch. Now, I do want to point out here that in a separate interview with the Boston Globe, Kurt answered about his routine a little bit differently than the one that I have presented to you thus far. He said, and I quote, I get up at 7.30 and work four hours a day, nine to 12 in the morning, five to six in the evening. Businessmen would achieve better results if they studied human metabolism. No one works well eight hours a day. No one ought to work more than four hours. And while we're gonna go ahead with the more extreme of the two routines, I do think both speak to this idea of the businessmen having it wrong. The other thing that is particularly funny, and actually I had to reshoot this intro, so I'm gonna let past me sort of take it away from there. <laughs> then the only other thing to mention is that he wrote about doing push-ups and sit-ups throughout the day to keep his buddy, uh, Linui, Lith, 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 have I ever known how to pronounce that word? Lith? Lith. 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 Okay. Do we even hear the TH? Lith. Lith. Yeah, life. <laughs> but besides the extra sit-ups and push-ups, and besides arguably the 5.30 a.m. wake up, though potentially this might be a good reset for me anyways, I am pumped to try his routine. But before I get started, I do want to talk about just how freaking quotable Kurt Vonnegut is. There are a lot of little nuggets of wisdom or just like funny sayings that I saw as I was researching him and his routine, and I am just excited to sort of sprinkle those into this video. One example is how he thought that writers should have hobbies other than writing or researching of writing in literature because, to quote, literature should not disappear up its own asshole. So you know. <laughs> or another example, when he was teaching creative writing, he started all of his courses by saying, the role model for this course is Vincent Van Gogh, who sold two paintings to his brothers. <laughs> Yes, there is a lot of excellent advice intermixed within all of this, but ultimately it feels like a big takeaway from him is to not take it so seriously or at least not to let it paralyze you. So that is the spirit with which I will move through tomorrow. Without further ado, I will see y'all bright and early at 5.30. Not even bright yet. Dark and early. 
dark and early at 5.30. Okay. I've made a mistake. We are going to start on the short stories. not quite six yet and I already have 149 words. It's so close to Nana Ryman's. at 705 words. I have finished that short story. 705 words today. The short story is at like 4,220. It's 635 right now. I am just starting to feel the week. I still have tons of my cappuccino left. Let's see, what is on the plans for today? Besides, you know, pretending to be Kurt Vonnegut. completely dark anymore. Hello. It is time to switch projects. File. Save. X. So I purposely didn't look up how many words per day Kurt Vonnegut wrote because... Hello. If it's not easy to find, like it's not the highlight of their routine or part of their process, I don't really need to know it. I need the stuff that stands out immediately because they've given a lot of interviews over the subject, whatever. But something that I thought was interesting in attempting to research him, there were some stats that came up from vonnegutlibrary.org because of course, as it turns out, Kurt Vonnegut has a museum and library. On the list of writer goals and aspirations that I didn't know that I wanted, having a library or museum after me. Being in a library or museum, oh my God. I mean, being in a library period, but like a museum library. I have a new bucket list item. <laughs> but the Kurt Vonnegut Library and Museum has a lot of really cool sources. And something I've never heard of before is actually the phrase anaphora. I don't know how I missed that in my like English education. Black defined anaphora as a sentence starting with the same word or the same two words as the sentence preceding it. In Black's list of books from his sample with the highest one word anaphora, three were written by Vonnegut. So then this is an example from Cat's Cradle. So it goes iconic. Anyways, I guess the point is I learned something new and I wanted to share it. One of the other things I found in my research is that Kurt Vonnegut, like a lot of writers of the time, got his start in short stories because there was more money to be had there and there were more like literary magazines and magazines published publishing short stories for their readership than there are now. So it's interesting just seeing in the past few decades, few, four, five, how much the publishing industry has changed. And to reiterate how much he sort of did not like his job and was against the nine to five, he wrote his father a letter that says, Dear Pop, I sold my first story to Colliers, received my paycheck, 750 minus a 10% agent's commission yesterday noon. It now appears that two more of my works have a good chance of being sold in the near future. I think I'm on my way. I've deposited my first check in a savings account and if I sell more, will continue to do so until I have the equivalent of one year's pay at GE. Four more stories will do it nicely with cash to spare, something we never had before. I will then quit this goddamn nightmare job and never take another one so long as I live, so help me God. I'm happier than I've been for a good many years. Love. Okay. And apparently two years later, he did quit his job. It's an interesting dynamic because the more I researched Kurt, the more he seemed to understand and accept how the industry had changed, how hard it was for like every generation of writers after to make money from it. And at the same time, truly believing as he did then, how sort of shitty the standard nine to five is, but still being kind of like, such as the way of the world, you gotta function in the world sort of thing. This article from The Nation does a really good job of summarizing everything, as well as compiling a lot of quotes from the letters that he wrote. And I just love that a few years later, he wrote a letter saying, I have a pitch, which I think will pay off. I hope to build a reputation as a science fiction writer. And it's just so fun to get to read and see the hopes and dreams of someone who later made it. 
I have a little bit of my cappuccino left. It is time to work on getting my 1,000 words and Meridian Maps number three. I am almost done, which is good because today is the last day of June and I am about to start Meridian Maps number four. That's gonna be like my, I don't wanna say main camp project, but it's gonna be the one that I work on early in the mornings each day. So let's get back to the writing. Do you like that here? Oh, good job, what a leap. What a beautiful, beautiful leap. Oh, oh, and she's dead. No, oh, but there's $49 fares that no one can take to anywhere. I'm going to go right outside with the puppies for the 10 minutes I have before it's time for breakfast. Hello. Go puppy, go. Go puppy, go. I don't know that this really looks like a cool day, but... Puppy! Two hundred fifty-three words in this scene, but I'm writing like the last scene of the book. I jumped around a little bit, but I'm excited. I did have to reference back to the little diagram I've been drawing in as I go along. It's a table containing like all the relationships to my main character, where the maps are, what her position on the ship is, etc. All right, five thirteen, and it's. 9.27 a.m. Little pepperonis. <laughs> Are y'all gonna do sit-ups and push-ups with me? I forgot until this moment that that was part of his routine, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, what is that? Over there. Yeah, okay. This is also just something I'm trying to do more of in the midst of quarantine and lockdown and everything. So, this is good. This is healthy. This is fine. One bad push-up. Two bad push-ups. I did it, Kurt. I did it. <laughs> I'm better at sit-ups. One, two. That's good enough for now, right? My goal is to get 500 more words in the span of 30 minutes. Oh, no. Oh, we're going down. Okay. Oh, well, you know, that kind of works. All right, 957. And it's 10.02. That means it's time to run my errands and then go to the pool. I'm very tired though. This 5.30 was harder than I expected. For my errands, I needed to one, go get gas because I was desperately low and the signal was already on. I also needed to pick up some groceries so that the boyfriend could make all the delicious food for later. And then because I was in the area, I decided that it was the perfect time for bubble tea because let's be honest, it's always the perfect time for bubble tea. And right on time, I was back home and ready to head out to the pool for my 30 minutes of exercise. I brought Miss Bourne, but didn't actually end up reading it because I was the only one there and had the pool all to myself to swim laps. Please do not judge the reflective powers of my paleness. It is now 12.02. I'm all packed up, ready to go. Here's oh. another time where every so often, I have lunch to go. That is a crazy angle. There was a big accident on the way home, so I'm gonna take the other route, but it won't take me. 50 minutes still, holy crap. On the road again, can't wait to be. On the road again, Ugh. why do I do that every time? Hi, it's 157. The parents are about to leave. About to leave. <laughs> I have a few minutes to get ready for my Patreon live stream. Got this all kind of set up. And the plan is I'm hoping to finish an article one and I'm hoping to finish a video that I've been working on for a while. That's it, that's the one. Ooh. Pretty. Okay. Hello! Hello! Well, first spray included. Oh, yeah. Getting Duke. I don't know if you can see his muddy paw prints. He was super muddy, so he had to get a bath. Now there's only 20 seconds left. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Yay! All right, let me know how you guys did that time. I got a little bit farther along. In the video I'm editing, I'm now at the seven minute mark. I finished the ride in. Duke and I are gonna chill outside. He's gonna chill. I'm gonna work. We should easily, not with 
without some deaths, not without some consequences, and then bam! Oh, only like 30 minutes left and I realized I have not done nearly enough push-ups and sit-ups today. What was the point of Googling how to correctly pronounce life if I only do them once? I bet Duke will be a better participant and slightly less uh, boisterous than the young pups. What do you think, Duke? Can I do a push-up? Oh, are you gonna do one of me? Oh. I was wrong. Oh, what? Two. You think Kurt would allow me just to play with the puppies my uh, exercise throughout the day? <laughs> Oh, bye dog. So off of the recommendation of my patrons, I am now watching Dairy Girls. I'm on episode three and I'm helping my mom with her Snow White Kincaid puzzle. I've just been kind of vegging out. I don't know that his routine tired me so much as getting up at 5.30 tired me. So I guess it was his routine. But like the actual work amount felt pretty good, pretty chill. It was nice to rededicate my entire morning to writing. And oh, the pool break. Amazing! I I love the water, first off. There was just something so relaxing and kind of floating in the water midday to the point that I'm thinking maybe my old routine could actually work here where I do take that midday break, but this time instead of running outside or going on walks or whatever, I just go to the pool. My hair can feel the chlorine because I didn't rinse it out, but maybe it'll just be a little bit blonder at the end of summer or something, you know? <laughs> All right, time for the scotch which I'm nervous about. My mom brought home this one for my grandma's. To be fair, I don't really know the difference between scotch and normal, normal whiskey. And there's like Tennessee whiskey, there's like rye whiskey. For someone who likes drinking, and I do, I don't really know that much about it. I know what kind of wine I like, and I'm learning what kind of beer I like, but after that, it's kind of, that's it. You sip scotch, right? Like, is that the thing? Is scotch a sipping alcohol? I probably shouldn't have poured that much. What if I hate it? This is for you, Kurt. Cheers. Oh, I just smelled it. Oh no, oh no. I'm gonna have to work up the courage again. I'll put the Dairy Girls on and that'll help, right? Oh God. Oh, it, okay. Holy crap. Have you known this ever since it's like Fuck. Oh. 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 What the? Ew. God, it came in waves. It was bad, then it wasn't bad, and then it was bad again? I don't know what to think. Oh no, should I put ice in it? Is that a thing that people do? With scotch? Yes. A scotch slush. I can't do it. It's terrible. I can't do it. Much like a lot of other things in life, I'm too old for things that don't make me happy. And in fact, this is making me actively sad. <laughs> what do you mix with the scotch? I tried so hard. I just, it's just not good. I just don't like it. Oh no. <laughs> Dr. Pepper and cream soda and scotch. I'm sure this is fine. Kurt Vonnie gets turning over in his grave. Okay. It's better. At least now I will be able to finish it. And that's truly what's important here. They're judging me too. So some lessons I learned from this experiment. One, 
I don't like scotch. Really the main takeaway here. Two, I really need to get back into exclusively writing in the morning and doing all my videos, emails, calls, whatever else in the afternoon. My brain's at its best in the mornings and I feel so much more invigorating getting my writing done then, whether it's freelance or my stories. It's weird because as flexible as Kurt's routine actually was, it taught me that I need to be slightly less flexible. I've gotten into this kind of pattern of getting work done whenever, as long as it gets done, but I don't think that's really working for me. Three, when I did eventually check my email after 11.45, I realized that one of the rules I'd set up on my Gmail account was filtering out emails that I actually needed, would have wanted. I set it up because I was getting weird mail to my business email because I do have it attached to the YouTube channel that was like not business email or it was weird like please help us sell children's toys kind of thing. So I set up the rule and then the rule I failed the rule or the rule failed me. Something was wrong. So I need to fix that. That was good to know. I didn't know it before now. I have some people to get back to. Four, that midday pool break y'all. Amazing. Five, in some ways it's a privilege to have a nine to five and in other ways it can feel like torture. Some people are able to make choices to get away from it. Some people are able to eventually make choices to get toward it. This is one of those good bad things about this series because all of the routines I'm trying are after the author has made it. Regardless of what odd jobs or service jobs or corporate jobs they worked before they were the writer they became. And Kurt did have a hodgepodge of jobs. I'm not exactly sure how to rectify this for this series or if it's even something that needs rectifying but I know for me I'm just going to continue to reread that letter he wrote his father before he made it and just use that as inspiration. And finally six, I really, really, really need to read Cat's Cradle and Slaughterhouse Five. But that is gonna be it for me as this is one of the more flexible yet set writing routines I've tried. I am going to challenge all of you guys to give it a go and if you do please let me know, tag me in whatever you do. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Also, please do comment down below and let me know what you're currently working on. What do you think of Kurt's routine? Have you read any of his books before? And just generally how your reading, writing life is going. But thank you guys so much for watching and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Writative, Jocelyn DeVore, 8-Bit Galaxy, Anna Robbins, Rachel Walden, and Ruth Arnold. And I will see you all very soon in the new video. Bye! I am pumped to try his routine. Try that again and speak like a normal person. What was the point of Googling how to correctly, what was the point of Googling how to correctly, or like part of their process? Yeah. He he was actually teeing. Mm.